Good morning, folks. You know, one day I may be able to come here and do a show completely without bad news about the future of our planet. That day is not today. We'll hit space weather, the moon, and the ocean collapse we've been discussing quite a bit over the last few years, and we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Minor M-class solar flaring, filaments erupting, far side eruptions, pops and surges across the disk, but no significant coronal mass ejections heading for Earth. The most dazzling Earthside event was a filament that released spectacularly on the north. This prominence rose and snapped in a pretty incredible display, the lift, the destabilization, the release northward. Like the other CMEs, it is not heading for Earth. Those other CMEs occurred on the far side where helioseismology suggests big sunspots exist. Now we have those big sunspots facing Earth as well, but they have been pretty inactive due to a lack of magnetic complexity. That may be changing in the big sunspot group this morning where opposing polarities are beginning to shear near the center. That could lead to larger flares. The good news is that the sunspot has crossed central heliographic longitudes and is beginning to turn towards the limb. Folks, last night's special video described the unprecedented solar storm impact to the ionosphere from last month, and this morning, that top team that confirmed the results of solar storm impact to the global electric circuit aren't waiting for peer review. They report directly to spaceweather.com and Dr. Tony Phillips that our planet got zapped again in that storm. The planet took a 10 to 15 percent surge in the electric circuit through the atmosphere, as we have described many times, this circuit is critical to various aspects of atmospheric dynamics, and I just gotta love how Dr. Phillips does not care about mainstream politics. Straight up says this impacts rain and lightning. We specifically covered that recently in another special video, and as those of you who read this month's issue of Observer Review learned, the planet had wild weather in the wake of the solar superstorm last month, including record-breaking floods quick stop at the moon next, where the lander has detected negative ions for the first time. These are impossible to spot from lunar orbit, but now are the focus of intense analysis in upcoming papers. Electrodynamics of a similar kind to what we literally just described on Earth, as these are driven by solar wind impact to the moon, just on a much more severe scale. Quick jump back in time, folks, right after the Weather Channel said in February that the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation Collapse would bring a rapid cold snap like in the movie The Day After Tomorrow, this paper came out predicting collapse beginning this decade with a full collapse timeline window that overlaps our own predicted catastrophe timeline. You may recall, they found this even without factoring in the Beaufort Gyre release that will happen any time now. Today. We find another team making the same prediction, just with a slightly faster timeline. We've been saying this due to happen before 2050, and this team puts that exact probability at over 50%, potentially as high as 76%, with a potential collapse as soon as the late 2030s. Not sure how much more of this can be published without the mainstream having to admit that cold is coming to Earth. This paper also does not factor in the Beaufort Gyre release to come, so the timeline is even shorter than they imagine. Observers, you are all prepping, right? Just checking. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.